Alive and alert on the north side of the dirt. It is your man D Real coming at you with another Be Real with D Real, where entertainment explains it. And we will be explaining this book right here Avengers number 13, the second half of the fall of the House of X, and a told you so moment. Um, she said, what? Told you so moment. Yeah, bruh. Told you so moment. But before we get into the told you so moment, we going to do what we need to do so we can do what we want to do. What we want to do? Comment, like, subscribe, and share to Be Real with D-Real page so that when new material comes out, you get it. If you're digging what a brother's shoveling, put some dirt in my bucket. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Why? Because entertainment is what i do and as i said entertaining you this saturday with avengers number 13. now avengers number 13 real quick is a direct continuation from avengers 12. what's happening in avengers number 12. well let's read about what's happening in avengers number 12 so we can get to some key points in avengers number 13. the anti-mutant organization orc is vowed to exterminate all mutants beginning with a devastating attack on the x-men the avengers were anxious to aid their allies and mutants everywhere many of whom were killed or in prison or on the run the avengers launched a multi-pronged attack on orcas's facilities around the globe liberating captive mutants and transporting them to their headquarters the impossible city. But Orcus, led in part by Modoc and former Avenger 3D Man, unleashed their own counterattack with most of the Avengers still on Earth. Orcus sent a fleet of robotic Stark signals to attack the impossible city. Only Yuna, a young thief who periodically switches places with Captain Marvel via the Nega Bands, remains to defend all of the innocent mutants on board. Oh, my goodness. And let's get straight to that. There you get your basic spectacular Stark Sentinel attack, but the Impossible City is managing to hold them off. Boom, there's Yuna talking to City, asking her, if it, do you got it? Do you got it? And she's like, nah, they will eventually overwhelm me. And she asks if you can dimensionally port shift. And she's like, yeah, I'm powering up the engines now. How long is it going to take? 16 minutes. How long before the Sentinels breach? 12 minutes. Ouch. Outside, we got 3D Man bragging about how great he is with his attack and talking about how he's got them on the ropes. But Modoc's telling him we need Sentinels elsewhere. But 3D Man, like, shut up. You can build more. Speaking of which, a bunch of them just got wrecked by Captain Falcon. T'Challa and Wanda with Wanda doing most of the heavy lifting, okay? And now they're contemplating the impossible cities being attacked. And T'Challa, his statement is what surprises me the most. Underestimated Delroy, didn't you? Wanda asked him, and he said, I suppose I did. I, of all people, shouldn't have, but I did. So see, T'Challa ain't perfect, unlike some people tend to think he thinks he is or how they think the character is written. Not nah, just calculating. And even calculations can be off from time to time. Tactics and statics. They can all be off. Statistics, excuse me, not statics. <laughs> Anyways. They decide they're going to split up. Wanda, her powers are needed out in space where the other Avengers are fighting off the Stark Sentinels. Captain Falcon and T'Challa are being teleported directly to Orcus Juno base. Meanwhile, Avengers are on their way. Yuna's panicking. We need to evacuate. No, you don't need to evacuate. Me, Thor, and Vision are coming right to your location, courtesy of the Impossible City. And when they get there, what, what, what you see? What you, what you see? 
pandemonium, a gate fold image, double page image, whatever you want to call it. Spectacular artwork by Mr. Francesco Mortarino, you know, almost reminiscent of a Carlos Pacheco or a Phil Jimenez or even George Perez. But anyway, the Avengers out in space got all, all, all they can handle with these Stark Sentinels. And meanwhile, in Juno base, they got an alarm going off. But 3D men already know what it is. Oh, it's probably Black Panther and Captain America. Okay, well, come on, Avengers. Come on and see what you threw away, is what Delroy says. And so they come with it. And 3D man is ready for them. Cap throws his shield. We know he's got three times the speed, reflexes, agility. So that's light work for Delroy. But meanwhile, Falcon decides he wants to take the high road and gets laid flat on his cap back. <laughs> meanwhile, what is T'Challa doing? He's grabbing him because Delroy says it's a trick. But T'Challa tells him, no, this is not a trick. All of this, this has been the trick. And in Wakandan, he speaks to Delroy and says, wake up, treasured one. Wake up, Avenger. And just like that, we get a flashback. What did he say? I'll do it. An embittered ex-Avenger. I can sell that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did I tell you in a previous video about the previous issue not five days ago? Oh, wait. Here. This is what I told you. Orchid Base Juno, where we see Delroy Garrett, a.k.a. 3D Man, working for the bad guys. It's got to be. Double agent job. Gotta be. Huh. Next time, y'all, listen when a brother talking to you. But here we go. Sentinels about to breach the impossible city. Will Delroy break his programming in time before the Sentinels breach the impossible city? Uh-oh. Not only is Captain Marvel getting ready to turn back into her weaker self. A Stark Sentinel is about to breach the city. Will Delroy break his programming in time? Oh my goodness, there it is. I'm myself again. Oh God, the Sentinels prepare for impact. All Sentinels in orbital combat arena deactivate. Authorization, Garrett 439. And they all you might kind of say, 3D man saved the day. Hmm. And out of the base they go, teleported back to the impossible city. And days later, with Iron Sentinels floating out in space, the Avengers happy and celebrating, Sam is barbecuing. Sam is barbecuing? Wait a minute. What did T'Challa say to him? Sam, are you certain these aren't burnt? <laughs> How many people got that relative at their barbecue? <laughs> All of us? Yeah. And looky there. Look what's happening. They don't even get to finish their barbecue, and we going straight into blood hunt next month yo that's my told you so moment because i told you so all right bro this ain't my first comic book reading this ain't my first avengers comic book reading this ain't definitely ain't my first black panther reading trust me when i say i know what's going down when it's going down so just trust in your boy. I wasn't losing my mind. I wasn't tripping. So all they turned Triapple on 3D, man. Daryl Roy Garrett into a bad guy. Why are they doing that? Let people cook, y'all. 
let people cook. Let some stuff unfold is the moral of this story yet again. <laughs> Look here, y'all. That's it for now. But fret not, I'll be coming at you with another one of the mothers. And until I do, yo, y'all be good. Be good to each other.